Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this lecture is on calculating uh, distance while accelerating, as well as graphing distance while accelerating. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on any Google Forms attached to this. Now, before we'd looked at some snapshot diagrams of things like snails and other things, where we could tell something was speeding up based on the spacing between each snapshot. Well, that spacing also can tell us that literally with each second that goes by, the snail is going to cover more distance each second. So here in this first kind of second, the snail covers this much distance, but in this next second of travel, the snail covers more distance than they did previously. So what that means is if we're looking at a graph, we can expect to see some sort of curvature going on if we're looking at distance. That also tells us that an equation for distance probably has some sort of power or square or cube or something with it. And it just so happens that for um, simple cases with constant acceleration, it follows this equation right here, where the distance covered equals the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. Now note that only time is squared, not the acceleration. The other thing to note is that we will use u for initial velocity, but sometimes we use v naught or other people use v naught or v with a little subscript of zero. So let's practice this real fast. Let's use that equation. Uh, let's pretend I, Mr. Canning, need to uh, know how long to make a straight track for racing rocket wagons, kind of like this wagon right here. The fastest wagon we calculate or uh, built uh, accelerates at an um, acceleration of three meters per second squared. The, we're going to be calculating the distance traveled in 10 seconds if a wagon starts from rest. So first things first, let's go ahead and write down our given info. Please remember that as you write down given info, we need to uh, show the variable, the value, and the units for each thing. The reason why we show the variable is because that will help us uh, identify which equation we think we need to use or multiple equations we need to use to solve the problem. So here the acceleration was three meters per second squared. We have a time of t equals 10 seconds. And we know that it starts from rest, so that means u or initial velocity is zero. Our unknown is d or distance. And so we're going to look on our equation sheet and find an equation that has those variables in it. And it just so happens to be the one we just showed d equals ut plus one half at squared. So simply plug in, uh, we have zero times 10, and we have 0.5 or one half times the three times 10 squared. Remember, it's only the time that's squared. Simplify our equation. So here, zero times 10 gives us zero. 0.5 times three gives me 1.5, and 10 squared is 100. So if uh, you're not doing this all in one step, that's an easy way to simplify it. And then you would go ahead and multiply that out to get 150 meters. Now switching gears a little bit, in the past we've talked about how slope of a position graph um, or position time graph is velocity, meaning how steep the graph is actually tells us the velocity. Here if we calculate the slope, which happens to be 2, we know that this thing is actually traveling at a speed or velocity of 2 meters per second. Well, if we are seeing something accelerate, that means its velocity is changing. So that means we would expect to see a graph where the steepness is changing, or in other words, a graph where it curved. So anytime you have a distance or position versus time graph that curves, that means that the speed or velocity is changing. That also technically means it's accelerating in some way, shape, or form. Now, if a line curves very steep uh, or very quickly, then we know that something has a larger acceleration. Something that curves more gently is, uh, is uh, accelerating not as quickly or a smaller acceleration. Um, here we can literally see the slope starts kind of flat and gets, you know, a little bit inclined. Here it starts flat but gets very steep, so it's accelerating quicker. Uh, just some real quick uh, shape uh, kind of identification of all this, so what it might look like in different forms. If we had a distance versus time graph of something speeding up, again, we would see something that's getting steeper. That could either be going up like this, that could be something that started with an initial distance and is going back to the origin, but again, it gets steeper and steeper as time passes. Something that's slowing down is going to get flatter and flatter as time passes. So here we see it starts steep and gets flat, and here it starts steep and gets flat. 
So again, we're looking at the steepness to tell how fast something is going, and then therefore also to tell whether it's speeding up or slowing down. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes and a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.